All right, we're looking at the Canon EOS M50. This kit contains several items. You can open up this bag. First item is the camera body. The Canon EOS M50 or the Canon EOS M50 Mark II. This camera, this unit is an EOS M50. Item two is the kit lens that comes with the kit. And this is a 15 millimeter to 45 millimeter focal length. And the uh, aperture is f over 35 up to or down to f over 6.3. Okay, and then item three is the lens cap. Item four is the SD memory card. So on the bottom, you just slide this hatch over and then Press the edge of the SD card to pop it out. Comes with a 32 gigabyte SD memory card. Item four is the, excuse me, item five is the battery pack. So here's a little lever. Just slide it downward or to the front of the camera and then the battery will pop out. And item six is the battery charger. So this is right here. Item seven is the USB cable. So in this case, it comes in a plastic container. This cable is for transferring files from the camera to a computer. You could also transfer directly from the SD card or even wirelessly. Item eight is the carrying case. Okay, so first things first. Um, if you want to, for some reason, remove the lens, so on the the front of the camera, on the right hand side as you're facing it, just push the release button. Then while holding the camera steady, twist the base of the camera body, or excuse me, the lens body clockwise. Wait, our, excuse me, counterclockwise. And then you can pull it. And then to put the camera or the lens back onto the camera body. Just look for a white dot along the bottom on the side of the lens body. And then look for a corresponding dot on the frame of the camera body. And just align the dots, push the lens toward the camera body, and then rotate the lens body clockwise until it locks. Okay, and then to remove the lens cap, just pinch the two edges and then pull off the lens cap. All right, okay, this camera's already on, so I'm gonna turn it off. So the on-off switch is on the top toward the right side. This dial selector allows you to select the various modes. You can rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. This prominent button on the top is the camera shutter button and the smaller red button. To its right is the uh, video shutter button. And then on the back, along the right side, are various buttons. So the menu button is to bring up the menu and press it again to close it. The play button will take you straight to the media gallery. And here's a selection wheel, so you press the top part to go up. This is for navigating um, the menus. So you press the top part to go up, the bottom part to go down, the left side to go left, right side to go right, and then in the middle of the selection wheel, if you can see the Q set button, that's like the enter or select button. Right, so, and you, you can, uh, first let's turn it on. So I'm gonna slide the dial to the on position and then you can look through the viewfinder here or you can just unfold the display panel. And you can keep it open like this or you can actually twist it, actually the other way. So like the bottom upward like this. It's easier to show. And then you can just fold it in. Now currently, um, the view is out of focus because the lens lens body is not extended. Okay, so on the side there's a slide lock, just 
push and hold the slide lock in the direction of the arrow, and then turn the lens body. So along the bottom of the lens body, there's markings, numbers that indicate the focal lengths. And then at the very bottom part of the lens body, there's a can the Canon logo, and there's a notch that indicates the current setting. So by default, it's aligned with the white, the smaller white dot. You can see it. And then you won't be able to see anything clear until you'll see, you see this message. It's telling you how to uh, set a focal length. So once it gets to the, uh, the smallest focal length, then that message disappears, OK? So this demo is just to show you how to record video. So just look at the dial, rotate it to the camera icon until it's lined with the wide notch. And then the display will prompt you to select one of two modes. You can use the, um, OK, well, I guess you're using touchscreen. Just pick Choose Mode. Select Choose Mode, and then it gives you the option between manual exposure, in which you set the shutter speed or time, the aperture and ISO, or you can go to auto mode. Again, you can use the selection dial or you just use a touch screen. So let's just go with the ex auto exposure. Okay, and let's see here. So Look at the top of the screen, autofocus mode. On the left-hand side of the selection dial, you can toggle between manual focus and autofocus. I recommend just going with autofocus. Again, that's displayed in the top left quadrant of the display. It's always a good idea just to make sure, just press the selection wheel to make sure you know which mode you're in. And then servo autofocus. Okay, so. I recommend pressing the menu button, and then uh, that takes you to the menu page along the top of the categories. And then with e in each category, there's pages. Again, you can use the selection dial or use the touch screen to navigate through. Um, let's see where auto, where focus mode is. Um, OK. So it's in the first category, fourth page, with movie recording mode selected. So focus mode, you can select it here. Servo mode, you just read the display. Continuously focuses to keep subjects sharp as movies are recorded. Uh, I recommend enabling servo mode. And then autofocus method, AF method. Um, there's tracking, zone autofocus, one point. Um, one point is good. Basically, it focuses on a specific point in space. That's really good for static shots like interviews in which your subject is not likely to move. There's also zone. Um, I think if you're ever unsure, maybe just go with tracking mode. Okay. Let's see here. All right. And then on, in the first category, on the first page, there's Recording quality, here's where you pick the resolution and frame rate and or frame rate. Uh, you can go with 4K resolution, which is locked in at about 24 frames per second, or you can go with full HD. That's 1920 by 1080 pixels. So let's just go with full HD, 24 frames per second. Okay, and then... Uh, menu to return. Um, what I recommend is, okay, let's see if I can find it. Exposure. I'm just looking for that setting. If I can't remember where it is. Or we want to display the histogram. I'll show you the histogram. Um, IS settings, what's IS? Menu. Okay, here, let's just see here. 
So here's the default display. I'm going to press the info button to toggle among the information modes. So now because we're in auto mode, I don't think the histogram is available. But when we're ready to shoot, just press the video shutter button. There we go. And then if you want to zoom in, increase the magnification or decrease the magnification. In other words, change the focal length. Again, you just push and slide the lock, rotate it, the lens body, and that will, and if you want to focus on a part, again, it's autofocus, so the camera should do most of the work for you. And you can see in the top left corner, there is an elapsed time. In the top right corner, there's a red circle to indicate that it's currently recording. And then when you're ready to stop recording, just press the video shutter button. There you go. And it stopped. And if you want to play it, just press the play button. And then you can do a preview. That's auto mode. Let's try manual mode. So I'm going to turn the dial, move recording, choose mode, and we'll go to man exposure, click OK. OK. And so similar display except along the bottom are the exposure settings. So here is the aperture, excuse me, the shutter, speed. I say speed in air quotations because it's more um, shutter time. This is represented in seconds. Aperture, which is f over some value. The f-stop is the denominator. And then this is the exposure compensation that allows you to adjust from minus 3 to min plus 3 to save that setting for last if you want to make adjustments. And there's ISO. So I recommend, unless you have total control over the lighting, maybe just set it to auto. OK. And then uh, press the info button to toggle among the different display modes. OK, so here's the, the histogram. So this graph represents the, uh, the colors in the scene. The left edge represents the dark colors. The right edge represents the white colors. Ideally, you want the histogram, the graph, to stay away from the left and right edges. Because if it's skewed to one side or the other, that means either the scene is too dark or too bright, or the settings on the camera are making the depiction of the scene too dark or too bright, or some combination of the two. To demonstrate what I mean, I'm just going to hold this black bag up in front of the lens, and you'll see how the histogram is skewed more toward the right. And I don't have anything pure white, but if I were to hold it in front of the lens, the histogram graph would skew to the right. So you want to, if you're in manual mode, just adjust the exposure settings as needed so that the histogram is not at the edges. So, okay, I'm going to hit record. And that's essentially it in terms of recording. That's just the absolute basics of recording video with the Canon M50, EOS M50. Um, and then to Transfer files. Again, there's a couple ways you can do it. Actually, you can't transfer by cable. Hold on, USB. Um, no, wait, excuse me, you can. So right here, on the right side of the camera as you're facing the back, there's an HDMI mini port, but the left port right here is a micro USB port. That's how you can transfer files from the camera to a computer. Alternatively, if you shut off uh, the camera and then pop out the SD card, you can put that into your computer if it's got an SD card slot or if you have an adapter, a USB adapter. And that's really the basics of using the Canon USM50.